difference between someone who's fast in quality and race has a lot to do with how you are as a person. Very, very difficult to change it. I think it's not even possible. Donna Want Mary dies on the inside of Lucas Blakely. As Danny Varesne decides, I want that P1. Yano up there, will he try and get the pair of them? Yes, he will. We finally got a documentary. I'm Jan Obmeer and I'm an F1 eSports driver for the Mercedes AMG Petronas eSports team. My name is Danny Beresny and I race for Mercedes AMG Petronas eSports team. I am an F1 eSports driver. That's what my day consists of basically, uh, trying to be as fast as possible uh, on the sim. I make content about it, make YouTube videos about it. F1 Esports is the best esports drivers in the world and just like in real life we're racing uh, on the actual tracks just like Lewis and George do and every year 20 best esports drivers in the world go head to head against each other to try and win the F1 Esports World Championship. I was teammates with Jarno before, he won his first individual driver championship as my teammate and he didn't really change as a person, obviously improved even further as a driver but uh, I just really liked him back then and really like him seeing exactly the same way after being on top of the world two times, achieving great success in social media as well. I think that's definitely a really positive thing. So going into the 2023 F1 eSports season, a lot is changing of course. Uh, previous three years we've done online. Um, this year we're heading back to LAN. Uh, so all drivers are going to be in the same place and not to mention I think uh, it adds some kind of pressure. Um, I think there are a lot of drivers who, uh, who have an advantage uh, in land setting compared to other drivers perhaps. I admire the live crowd. Uh, when they are there I know that we are doing something right. I love the environment of seeing the other drivers who I'm trying to beat. It should be really cool though, meeting everyone. Ultimately, the biggest target is to win the championship. But yeah, it should be a really cool experience and hopefully we come out on top. I do definitely prefer LAN events over online events, yes. That's more pressure. There is action every single place you look. I want to be faster than everyone on the grid. And that's our goal, is to win. We are in the I'm sure there are going to be some heated moments, but part of racing. The rigs that we had to use for the events, uh, they resemble a real Formula One car sitting position and I would never be able to fit in a real Formula One car, unfortunately. So I was really, really frustrated to have difficulties uh, in the first day of practice when we arrived to see them because I found it really hard to get comfortable in the rig. Um, I was a bit scared in the first evening when I went to sleep. I was not happy at all. Yes, yeah, second day of practice had a lot of rig issues, PC issues, but yeah, that's part of it, I guess. I want to be the fastest in the world, so obviously that includes my teammates as well. Obviously I'm never happy with second, third, fourth, fifth. I want to aim for uh, being the fastest driver on the grid, uh, but I think that's nearly the same for everyone. Successful season for me would be getting P1 in every Q1, 2, 3 and winning every race. <laughs> to the F1 Sim Racing World Championship. I want to fight for podiums, for wins. I want to be the most consistent drivers. I want to be on top of the championship. Bahrain, usually I'm not really fast there, but I always get quite decent results. Um, I think my worst finishing position is P4. We're riding with Jano up here. We're watching him do a lap. We're watching him head around the circuit right now. Uh, Will he be able to put it on pole? He's been on pole here before. Can he replicate that? Final lap wasn't really good. I had a monitor issue throughout qualifying as well. It made it a little bit harder. But nonetheless, it was just a bad lap to, to add on top of that. I think it was only P10, but the penalty moved me up to P9 on the grid. And yeah, just a poor lap. 
I never want to be out of a Q1 or Q2 again ever in my life. Danny Berezde into the point five. He had a very strong Q2. Danny Berezde has just knocked him off. He's gone put on pole as well. It's an excellent provisional start to his Formula One eSports, his sim racing campaign this year. But oh. Thomas Runner goes, he takes it. And he's the one who ends up on pole. The P2 lap is basically pole position in F1 eSports because uh, with the strong effect of slipstream and DRS you can overtake any time. So to get front row it's a huge achievement for me. With uh, Danny Berezne and Jano, them guys doing the bullying on Lucas Blakely. We're just going to have to wait and see later on. But a very strong performance from him. He's still up the front fighting for that potential win and it's all going to come down to what happens later. Yes, okay, they've missed out on the one point for pole position. It is only one point. The big points are scored on race day. Um, yes, yeah, strategy changes, of course, a little bit if you are starting in the mid-pack. Um, also, the way you approach the race is a little bit different. Um, you really have to go on the attack. Uh, aim to win and uh, think about what I have to do to do so. The difference between someone who's fast in quality and race has a lot to do with how you are as a person. The F1 Sim Racing World Championship is underway! Ron Haar on pole position ahead of Danny Beresley going defensive already. It's Ron Haar down towards turn one as the cars feed through. What I wanted to achieve the whole race is to not lose more than one position. So basically be P1 or P2. I follow Thomas, whatever happens. Everybody seems through unscathed for now, which is a box ticked for the beginning of this race. And there you go. I think we had a little bit of a lock up there from Jana Watmir as he's trying to get past Alvaro Caraton there. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a difficult race to balance out on when to make the right moves. Of course, if you take too much risk, you end up maybe not getting any points or damage or um, spitting out. And if you don't make any moves, then you just stay where you are. Jano Watmer, who's gained one position at the start, known for his better race pace than quality pace, as we now have a fight for the lead, as Danny Berezne decides, I want that P1 going round the outside, late on the brakes, and that is, oh, contact! That's contact, that's Nicholas Longay in the slipstream, now out of the slipstream, DRS wide open, Ronar takes the lead back from Danny Berezne. Leader ahead, got Nicholas Longay behind him, Thomas Ronar, Lucas Blakely, a whole host of champions riding on board behind him, we're seeing an overtake from Jano Watmiri, dives up the inside of Lucas Blakely, Side by side, that's Norgrove and Otmir into turn one. Who's going to come out on top? Oh, Otmir's gone off the road. Norgrove didn't give him any space either. Got pushed off in turn two, so went through the gravel, so I had to calm down a little bit. Berezne behind. Uh, he's looking to attack and also defend as we ride on board with Jana Watmir as he's going up through the gears. He goes to the inside line. Can he spot his braking zone? He can indeed. Get straight to the apex. I didn't really feel comfortable making risky moves. As we now run on board with Danny Berezne, and he's getting overtaken by Alfie Butcher. Yeah, Contact! Oh, what's gone on there? There's a lot of front wing damage there as there was a car slow into turn one. But Jano Watmir is up to fourth. Danny Berezne is now past Alfie Butcher for P6. Part of your brain which goes by instinct is I think 20 times faster than the one that goes about strategically thinking. You're just much more driving on instinct. Okay, let's take a deep breath. Seven laps to go. We go into the final corner, but I imagine he might well try a move into turn one. Norbro looks like he's got a reasonable exit, but Otmir is right in the diffuser of the Ferrari. He pulls to the inside line. Jano Otmir, will he try and get the pair of them? Yes, he will. Norbro has no DRS to defend. And Otmir has gone from fourth all the way up to second. If he can spot his braking zone, that is a beautiful move from Jano Otmir. Thomas Ronha wins the first race of the season in second position. Jano Otmir, Danny Berezne gets Norgrove on the line to finish sixth.
I never have doubt that uh, he will score the points needed for the team to fight for the Constructor Championship title. Going from P9 to P2 was a bit of a, a dream. Of course, ideally I would have won the race, but for the people who watch F1 Esports, it is incredibly difficult to gain four or five positions in a race, let alone eight. Good day, Max and Mike at P2. Uh, today with the circumstances in the race. Um, and yeah, I can't wait for the next event. Is it almost more satisfying doing P9 to P2 than starting P2 and winning? Um, no. Always <laughs> <laughs> win? Yeah. Um, no, the, the aim is always the same. If I could start P2 and finish P1, I'll be obviously more happy than when I start P19 and go to P2. Might sound weird, but yeah. Um, every position higher up is better. So.